Welcome to Transfiguration in Oakdale. Transfiguration exists to lead all those in the East Metro to Christ, the source and summit of our daily and eternal lives. We are switching up the podcast a little bit today. I'm going to give a reflection on Psalm 23. And I know you've probably heard it before, but I want to I want us to journey through this together and and because we're in the middle of Lent and Lent is a time for prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. I hope that you can make this some of your prayer in the next couple weeks or leading up to Easter or maybe even maybe like some type of goal for Easter is to make this psalm real and alive in your lives. One of the, you know, one of the reasons we're doing is because, well, for practical reasons, the priests are fairly busy and you know how the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. So I thought, I, I've thought of this for a little while, but I hadn't hadn't pulled the trigger to make it happen. So what I want to do today is walk through the 23rd Psalm. And this is probably the most familiar Psalm we've ever heard. And many of you probably have it memorized. And, and sometimes that's Sometimes that's to its detriment. It's, you know, wildly popular because of its power, but also it's wildly popular, so sometimes it loses its power. And I was a little bit inspired by Matthew Kelly. He tells a story of a dinner party, a very, very fancy dinner party. And at this dinner party is one of the most famous actors in the world. And he's taking requests, and he... He does, you know, some of Shakespeare and he does some of all these other fancy plays and I'm not going to try to name any and sound ignorant. And at the end, there's a there's a priest at this dinner party and the priest requests him to recite the 23rd Psalm. And he does it. And he, and he well, for first he says, as long as you will do it after I do it. And the priest is kind of sheepish and says, okay, fine. I really want to hear you do it though. And he does it and everyone is incredibly impressed and it's very dramatical and and beautiful. And then he asks for the priest to do it. There's an older priest and and he starts. He starts off, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing that I shall want. And he goes through the entire psalm, and people, instead of moved to clapping and applauding like they were when the actor did it, people are moved to tears. And the actor, in a, you know, maybe in a sense of wisdom, says to the people, the difference between those two is. I know the psalm, and this man knows the shepherd. And I want us to take some time during Lent, I think it's a good thing to do, is to ask ourselves if we know this shepherd from this psalm. And so we're going to go through it verse by verse. I'll offer a little bit of reflection and maybe even some type of examination of conscience for us. And I invite you to just listen along and and take these things to prayer in the next month and the next years or whatever. This psalm has become a wildly popular and not so powerful psalm in my past and actually because of that because of that story by Matthew Kelly it's become one of my favorite and and also we want to do this because the psalms are the the life of the church every priest and deacon and bishop says these psalms every single day and they are you know in some ways the the lifeblood of the priesthood and the people, and the people are asked to do these psalms as well. But as you can imagine, saying them every single day, it's very difficult to 
be able to reflect on them and to really take them to heart. And I think it would behoove us to slow down a little bit and every once in a while ask, like that, can I be like that priest and say these things, say these psalms as the psalmist wrote them? Are they really true for me today? Is the Lord really my shepherd? So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. Do I allow the Lord to be my shepherd? Do I allow myself to be one of his sheep? And what does that mean? The shepherd takes care of everything. The sheep can be ignorant little sheep and wander around and eat grass. And there's nothing they lack. Because they have a shepherd that takes care of them. Can I say today that I know that shepherd? Other versions, the RSV version says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do I allow the shepherd to lead me, or do I go grasping after stuff? In green pastures, he makes me lie down. Do I know of a good the good shepherd who leads me to green pastures? And what does this mean? This doesn't mean just basking in the sun, of course, as a sheep. He leads me to green pastures that I may eat freely. Because I don't want, I have no want in me. Because he takes care of me. To still waters he leads me. He restores my soul. Do I feel this? Do I really feel by that I'm by still waters? And I can just imagine being by the ocean or a beautiful lake and just hearing the water, you know, crest over the shore, the shoreline and feeling the ease and comfort and the relaxation of that place. Do I know the shepherd who leads me to this place that restores my soul? This is, this is what a vacation is meant to do, to restore my soul. Do I know the shepherd that wants to do that for me today? He guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. Do I allow the Lord to lead me and guide me? Or do I ask him to be with me on my path, my way, in my name? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. When I walk through the valley of suffering, of tragedy, of death, do I fear? Or do I allow the shepherd to walk me through it? It says an interesting phrase here, for your rod and your staff comfort me. The rod and the staff for the, for the sheep is meant to put around their neck and kind of maneuver them back to safety so that the sheep can just be a sheep and be free to roam about the green pastures. Do I allow 
the Lord to use his rod and staff? Are they comforting? Or are they, are they abrasive because I'm fighting it? You set a table before me in front of my enemies. Do I allow the Lord to do this in my life? Do I allow him to set the table in the midst of troubles in my enemies? Or do I fight for myself? You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Anoint my head with oil as a blessing that I'm anointed, that I'm his. My cup overflows. Do I feel this overflowing or do I feel empty? Am I desperately trying to fill this cup or do I allow the Lord to fill it up? Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days. Is that where I'm living? Or have I made my own home? I want to read, reread through it just one more time fairly slowly and I I want you to try to use your imagination a little bit and think about the Lord really doing these things for me and if I don't feel them immediately or perceive them I do invite you to ask the Lord later perhaps to give you that security Sometimes we need to abandon some stuff. Sometimes we really do need to abandon some stuff in order to be a sheep. We got to give up our pride sometimes. I'm pretty sure sheep aren't super prideful animals. Do I allow the Lord to be my shepherd? And there's also some people listening that don't feel like the shepherd cares that I feel abandoned. I want to be under his wings and I want him to take care of me. I just don't feel it. I feel like I got to do it all, all on my own because no one else is taking care of me. And I ask you to reflect on that now and maybe in the next couple of weeks and take this to prayer and maybe even just take this psalm to prayer and ask and ask to have that and ask to have the lord be your shepherd lord be my shepherd please i love a a very simple prayer that father jeff taught me a long time ago and it's kind of a act of humility and a petition all in one it's very simple it's, it just goes like this lord i can't you can please do Lord, I can't do this on my own. I know you can, and I'm asking you to do it. I'm asking you to let me feel your love for me today, even if I don't feel it from my brothers and sisters. So I'm going to read through it one more time, and I ask you to just take it to your own prayer. And if you like these podcasts, please let us know, and maybe even... Let us know what psalm you'd like to reflect on next time. I think I have Psalm 63 lined up for next time. Another one of my favorites. So read through it one more time, and, and I'll just leave you with some silence and allow you to maybe turn off the radio or whatever else you're listening. And and take five minutes. Just take five minutes and, and ask the Lord, or maybe even repeat the last minute or so and just listen to it again. And ask ourselves, do I, do I really know the shepherd like that priest? 
can I say it with a little quivering in my voice maybe even, that I know how much I'm loved. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. In green pastures he leads me to lie down. To still waters he leads me. He restores my soul. He guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You set a table before me in front of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord for endless days.